So today I'm going to talk about molecular modeling of the interaction of taxiflow and the quorum sensing regulator, plus R of pseudonymous argument. Right now, at this moment, there is a huge problem. As the World Health Organization stated that in the coming years, and actually right now due to COVID, we're already facing this problem, the antibiotic resistance problem. The thing is, for example, I mean, many, if you have, if you've had COVID-19, in many cases, I mean, the doctors have assigned antibiotics. And the thing is, if you take into that account, uh, most of the deaths caused by COVID-19 are actually by secondary infection due to bacteria. And the, the, the usage of antibiotics for treating COVID-19, I mean, this also actually affects, uh, increases the rate of antibiotic resistance. So the thing is, as you can see on this slide, actually, the World Health Organization announced the list of the most dangerous superbug. And among them, as you can see, it's the most arabinous, and it's the priority category, it belongs to critical. So the thing is, antibiotics are not effective anymore. So how do we solve that problem? And one strategy is to target the quorum sensing system. The thing is, uh, quorum sensing system is like the communication system of the bacteria. Basically, the, the bacteria communicate with each other, uh, release signaling molecules, and that way they control their social behavior. And one of those behaviors is the synthesis, is the creation of biofilms. Uh, think of biofilms as a castle that, that allows them to defend the bacteria from antibiotics. So to give you an idea, is that biofilms increase antibiotic tolerance by a thousand times, and also biofilms are less susceptible to immune response. So you can see that this is a quite a huge problem. And the idea is to use secondary metabolites which are small molecules to target specifically the core sensing system of pseudonymous organosa. So the thing is, actually, the core the pseudonymous organosa's core sensing system consists of three different systems. So here you can see this is the hierarchy of the QS system of pseudonymous organosa. And from the slide, you can see that actually the last I, last R system controls the others. So basically, if we inhibit last R system, we can. Uh, we can stop the signaling cascade, which activates the whole core sensing system of the bacteria, those which can lead to the uh, decrease of the synthesis of biofilms, and also uh, make sure that the antibiotics are more effective because it, it decreases, for example, the so called uh, resistance mechanism of the bacteria by, by turning off the core sensing system. So, as you can see, actually, the biofilms, for example, all of the systems. They all lead to the, uh, the synthesis of biofilms. Those target definitely the last R system. And as you can see, there are many other parts which correspond to the biofilm dispersion. Another example, uh, another fact, and that is, for example, uh, by targeting the core sensing system, we can also uh, like uh, affect the biofilm structure. So basically, the bacteria they go to the plant plant planktonic state, and again, they are much more susceptible to antibiotics. So right now I'm going to talk about the structures that were used for our molecular modeling. And the thing is, we have used taxifol, which is a flavonoid. And the thing is, it has been shown for flavonoids that they inhibit this the core sensing system, specifically LASR through a non competent mechanism. They do not act, act via competition. They do not disrupt the dimerization of LASR. They prevent LASR from binding to promoter DNA. And they also produce a it does not use the canonical binding site. And another paper, they show that there are multiple antagonists that bind to LASR, they stabilize it and provoke an unnatural fault. And thus, it does not allow the binding of LASR to promoter sequence. And also, this does not, the antagonists not affect dimerization. So both papers, they suggest the same thing. So that's why we specifically taxifolin is another type of flavonoid. And, and all the results they mostly show for quercetin. So for the materials and methods, as you can see on, this, on the left side, this is the whole past software list that were used for molecular modeling. And this is the sequence alignment that were used for the LASR structure. Okay, so basically, the first thing was to construct the whole uh, structure of the LASR protein. We used a couple of structures. You hear the templates, the main templates serve this one, which is the current sensing control repressor. Right now, the question is, uh, the problem is that 
Luster protein, the whole structure is not available. So this part is just like a quick introduction from our previous paper. And after, after the construction, we, uh, we move to the molecular docking. In this case, we perform sort of ensemble docking where we use multiple docking programs and try to use machine learning techniques. For example, we perform molecular docking with multiple docking programs such as RDoc, Flexate, Autodogwin, and Redoc. And then we clusterize the data and we find there are two sites. And the thing is, as I mentioned earlier, that the quercetin, uh, specifically the OA7 group, is responsible for the main inhibitor activity. So that's why they decided to imitate the experiment and modify the OH7 group with a simple hydrogen atom. And in both cases, we can see there are two, uh, two uh, clusters that correspond, that, are, that correspond to all docking programs. And after that, we perform molecular, dyna molecular dynamic simulations. Uh, and as you can see, that the, the structures are quite stable in this case. That uh, we've, um, we've simulated, we've performed simulations for over like two microseconds in some cases. So we have got enough data. And after that, here you can see, for example, the first binding site is the, is that the LBD binding domain. And using the, for example, the uh, the taxopol molecule does not interact directly in the binding domain, so it's from the last allosteric mechanism, but it does interact with some uh, important um, residues that are quite uh, conservative, conserved in different species. And in this case, just changing, just changing that the oh, without the OH group, it does affect the binding, and those it does interact with, with the it does interact with less and less residues. And in the case of the, uh, the second binding site, which corresponds to the DNA, DNA binding, the, the bridge, as you can see, here's the location. Uh, in, this, in the first situation, the normal text of all molecule interests of many residues, conserved unnested residues. As for the just removing the OH group, just uh, decreases the amount of uh, molecules that participate in the interact. As for the that's also the thing is we've also calculated the relative binding energy to get an idea. Just say just these values, actually this and this are correspond to our previous papers to, to give an idea exactly the binding energy. And as you can see, for example, the quercetin and taxophone, they have almost the same binding energy, but yet they're more than the native OT inducer, native inducer that activates the, the molecule. Uh, so we can use it actually the in the for quercetin and taxifolin for the second bind uh, are not competitive binding mechanisms, but are like uh, more like a non competitive mechanism. They inhibit for non competitive mechanism. So, thank you very much for your attention. If you have any questions, please go ahead. Okay. The section is open for questions. Okay, I ask specialists in this field to ask questions. If there are some questions, please ask. No, no questions. Thank you very much for your presentation.